Greetings from Wyoming. OSY guy here, and this is a review of Simple Help. This is my uh, choice for best remote desktop application. I really like it. I've been a freelance computer technician for a long time. Uh, I prefer Linux for my operating system. Uh, as far as uh, um, all my business computers run Linux, and so I don't want to use a solution that forces me to use Windows to do remote desktop, and so I've been looking for the best application for doing that. I started off with TeamViewer. That's very expensive, continues to be very expensive, and uh, has turned out to be uh, um, not as good as uh, what we're looking at today. Uh, tried remote uh, desktop, the Chrome remote desktop, that's um, that's pretty clumsy to get set up for a lot of my customers. Didn't find that to be particularly good. Uh, I've uh, used VNC and Romina, but those require port forwarding uh, put into uh, uh, my customer's router, and, and it just wasn't that good. So Simple Help has become by far my what I consider the best choice. Um, this is findable by going to simple-help.com. Uh, the single user license is $300 per year. Um, and uh, uh, it can be installed. The server uh, for Simple Help can be installed in Linux and uh, Windows and uh, Mac OS X. Um, but I uh, um, didn't really want to go that way because you have to have a your desktop computer or your server computer has got to be publicly accessible, and I didn't want to go through that nonsense. So uh, I chose to run a droplet from DigitalOcean. This is really good. Uh, I installed Ubuntu 16.04 server, um, or I chose uh, Ubuntu 16.04 server on DigitalOcean.com. This was back in uh, December uh, of uh, 2017. Uh, so uh, just to, just before the start of this year, I, I did that. Uh, I, I installed uh, or I chose the component that that uh, included one gigabyte of RAM for that uh, on DigitalOcean. At that point in time, it was ten dollars a month to do that. Um, they have um, increased their capabilities and decreased their pricing. So I think you can get the one gigabyte of RAM solution for five dollars a month now, which is even better news. Um, if you go to simple-help.com and uh, select support, getting started, uh, there is a, uh, a an option that says make my life easy. And uh, this is the uh, resulting screenshot that you would get from it. And if you click on download simple help, then you're on your way to uh, um, or uh, download simple setup, I should say. You're on your way to very quickly setting up um, uh, a server that uh, will be uh, quite amazing to you, I'm sure. Um, so um, one of the options uh, when you run Simple Setup is you'll see that there is an option that says DigitalOcean. When you click on that option, uh, it just gives you some, some quick instructions. Uh, go find uh, an Ubuntu droplet on DigitalOcean.com. Don't set up an SSH key. Uh, make sure that you choose one that has one gigabyte of memory or more. Um, uh, when you get through setting that up at DigitalOcean, uh, you will receive an email message that will give you your new IP address uh, for that server and the initial password. Um, and then uh, uh, now if you just continue to use this routine here, uh, you don't have to sign into DigitalOcean to change your password. You can just put in your new password in this uh, dialog and click continue, and uh, that will uh, uh, change uh, the password to your preferred password, and it will uh, 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 configure and set up uh, all the things that are needed uh, and uh, will create a simple help server at DigitalOcean. Uh, you're done in about 20 minutes. When you go to your IP address um, that was assigned to you uh, in, a, in a browser, um, you will find that uh, this is your, your starting page. Uh, so you are seeing uh, the, the, the simple help server that is your server. Um, and uh, 
uh, you'll have a spot here for customer access, which is where you download your uh, or where where your customer downloads their program to uh, allow you to to uh, get remote access to their computer. The the uh, technician page is the thing that you download for the component that you use when you're going to connect to your customer. And uh, the remote access um, here is, uh, uh, I set that up in one particular computer situation. I just wanted to be able to access uh, at any time I wanted to a particular Windows 7 computer that was uh, running an SQL server instance. And I just wanted to be able to maintain that, that computer. And uh, this uh, remote access uh, um, module uh, allowed me to do that. That worked pretty well. I did try that on uh, an Ubuntu computer and uh, couldn't get it to go. I'm not sure what I did wrong there, um, but I wasn't that concerned because I didn't really need to access another Ubuntu computer. I needed to access a, a, a Windows computer and it worked well for that. Um, if you uh, go to your IP address and do slash customer, um, that will take you directly to the customer page. Uh, and uh, uh, I've gone to my own website and I've set up a, uh, a button that is labeled uh, Download Simple Help uh, uh, on my uh, business web page. And uh, that points to my IP address slash customer. Uh, when my customer clicks on that, they, they see a a download button there they go straight to that um, so they don't even see these three options at all they just go straight to customer access and um, so I found that to be a, a really good way to set it set it up for my customers use the first time that you open up your technician uh, uh, login uh, console um, it will be focused on one user that has been created for you called simple help admin and there is no password at that point. So uh, when you when you log in, uh, this will be your your dialog, and there is an administration uh, tab that you will click uh, there, and then you have the option to create your administrative password for Simple Help Admin. And then uh, after you do that, then you can also um, uh, create as many technicians as you would like. I like to create. Uh, I only have, I'm I'm my only technician, so I, I just create one uh, technician user account by my first name and uh, put in the password that I like to use, and that's the way I almost always sign in into the technician. I don't sign in as the simple help admin anymore. Now, after you run simple setup, which was just that easy dialog where you could click on DigitalOcean. Uh, after that's been done and you have an up and running server, Simple Setup turns into being an actual management tool. Um, so if you open up uh, Simple Setup, you'll see that you can update your your server to the latest version of Simple Help. You can start and stop the the, uh, the server and so on right from that that uh, um, that screen. Now um, there is a, a folder that contains all the configurations for this screen to be able to access and manage your server. So I just wanted to show you that there. Um, uh, this is some detail that you may not need to have right away, but but I wanted you to, to be able to see this and, and perhaps even come back and review this video if you needed to, to see uh, where the configuration file is for uh, your up and running server. And uh, so there is a, a hidden folder that is created after you've run simple setup that's called dot J, J wrapper. And um, inside that folder is another folder called J wrapper dash simple setup. And inside there, there is a JW apps shared config folder that has all the configurations for your up and running DigitalOcean server. Uh, and so you'll want to back up that folder. Uh, just as an example, if you want to go to another computer and set up that computer to be able to administer this DigitalOcean uh, server, then you'll want to uh, uh, download and, and run simple setup. And then you'll, you'll want to uh, go find that, that hidden folder and find the JW Apps Shared Config 
folder and delete that folder and then uh, uh, then uh, restore your your backup version of that folder and then uh, that will uh, uh, allow you to be able to uh, to uh, administer your your uh, the, the very same server even if it's on a different computer or if you started up uh, started over on the same computer or whatever uh, it's really nice to be able to just get that that whole configuration set up so you can do updates very easily um, this is the uh, um, the technician console after I have uh, uh, set up a couple of computers that are uh, um, um, that are, are, are running the customer module for uh, um, one um, uh, computer that's uh, running Pop OS, which is a variant of Ubuntu, and then I have another computer that's running uh, Windows 10. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start up those those two uh, um, sessions and uh, then demonstrate those to you. I'm going to start up the uh, uh, the technician's console here, so. I'll sign in. And I have a couple of computers uh, here in my in my office and uh, so I've got one that's running Pop OS, which is the Ubuntu variant that I was talking about and then I've got a Windows 10. So we'll we'll connect up to uh, Windows 10 here. I'll just double click on this and uh, it starts up the the process of connecting to the computer where I ran the the customer module already and so here we are uh, connected to a Windows 10 computer um, there's one thing I always like to do for my customers in this case uh, in Windows 10 when you uh, uh, double click on that remote support program it doesn't show up as an installed program you can't find it in the programs list so um, it's just simply a, a shortcut that I put on the desktop for my for my uh, 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 computer folks, so um, I, I when I sign on to their computer, I go to their uh, file explorer and go to downloads and locate the uh, remote support right here, and I just right click and select uh, uh, send to desktop, and um, uh, then after I after I do the send to desktop here. Uh, then I just um, take that that module and uh, uh, change it so that its title says Knut support, uh, just so that it's uh, easy for me to in the future have my my customer be able to just locate this and and quickly uh, uh, double click and uh, and we can connect up and I can help out my customer. Um, now this shows up in a uh, um, somewhat smaller fashion here. Um, uh, so if you uh, want to actually make this full size, then you can click on the uh, full screen right here, and then that uh, opens up to uh, um, to show you uh, uh, without having everything reduced a little bit. So um, um, it's that easy to access a, a Windows 10 computer. As soon as I'm done, uh, I uh, click on the X button up here and uh, say End Session, and that uh, drops that session out of the Windows 10 computer. And uh, now this uh, Pop OS computer, I'll just double click that and uh, we'll go get access to that computer as well. Um, we'll make this full size as soon as it's ready. So I'll hit the full size button. And so everything uh, uh, behaves uh, just fine here from, you know, being able to uh, uh, run Firefox or something like that. Um, you know, everything is... is uh, uh, I can I can uh, access everything here as if I'm sitting in front of the computer, so everything is very nicely done inside of uh, 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 Windows 10, or I mean inside of uh, Pop OS, which is like I say Ubuntu, uh, and uh, so um, and then I'll just sign out of there and say end the session, and um, that's all there is to it. It's that easy. So. Um, uh, I hope you enjoyed seeing this uh, quick overview. I uh, hope this uh, this will be a good solution for many of you. If you're a technician or you're someone who uh, needs to uh, access another computer all the time, uh, this can be a really great way to do it. Uh, please give me a thumbs up if this video helped you. 
And uh, you're always welcome to subscribe and watch past and future videos from OSY Guy. Thanks for watching.